the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For the season of training is a very hard season. You see some of my photos of many years. As wonderful as those photos are, you see some of us looking lean. We look better than those days now. But those are the days that made these days. Hallelujah. Emptying yourself in prayer. Emptying yourself in fasting. Raising the bar of your fire and your passion. Even when you are doing well, you increase the bar of the marking script. As if you are not doing anything. Hear me. My dear generation, hear me. Don't settle for less. Don't settle too cheap. There are heights and the journey is far. Remember my teaching last week. I challenge you on this wise and I'm still repeating it again. When it's time to announce the US conference, I will tell you a very serious miracle that God did. It is, there are things that when God does, it just keeps you in awe. Hallelujah. Let me tell you sincerely, sincerely, and I'm saying this openly. There is no one pound, one euro that has been sent already for this conference. Every money that has been used to do everything so far has been the lavish giving of God's people with joy in their hearts. In spite of the limitation, we don't have an account provided yet and people have squeezed in to say, I can't wait. When, when you stay and it builds you, don't worry about supplies. Don't worry about a name. Don't worry about where you will get the donkey for the triumphant entry. Just make sure that your, your gift and your talent is developed. In one day, God can open up a door. Someone can come and sing one song and the whole nation will place a demand on you. In one day, God can put you somewhere as a politician and as a businessman. A dear woman, I can't remember her name now. I met her when I went to preach for my dear friend, Pastor Kingsley in Lagos. And I meet this woman and she starts to tell me her story, very touching story. It's possible she's even watching or may get to hear this. And what took her to the White House was Moi Moi. Making Moi Moi. That's what scaled her till she got to the White House. Until today she's still doing it. She shared with me her story and I was so touched. I remember discussing with Pastor Kingsley's wife. I said, you will have to do a documentary for this woman. Incredible. Anything can lift you if you refine it. Admiring people and wishing if I were more beautiful. God knows if since you are not Esther, be something else. You are not Esther, be Deborah. At least be something. Wishing you were Esther is a waste of time. If you cannot be the queen that King Ahasuerus will marry, then be Deborah the warrior. Then be Naomi. Then be this. If you cannot be Gideon, be Elijah. If you cannot be Elijah, be Samuel. Since you cannot fight, learn how to prophesy. But by all means, make sure you do something. Can I tell you, what God has put in your hand is enough to open the gates of your destiny. Listen to me. Thank God for those who have what you do not have. But stop this season of blind admiration that makes you to demean what you have. Everybody can celebrate what you carry. You just have not recognized it and refined it. Anything in its crude fashion is not worthy of being rewarded. I know you are a great musician. Thank God for um, David Dam and Sam and K-Strings and all these my precious people. Thank God for their lives. But do you know that what God has put in you 
someday you can stand and share the stage and also celebrate Jesus but it's good to be challenged by other people's giftings but please not at the detriment of what God gave you thank God for Apostle Joshua Selman but what you are seeing is a refined version of something you may even have a greater version of anything looks bad when it is not refined including oil Go and ask those who work in the oil and gas sector. When you see oil in its raw and crude state, the smell alone will drive you away. You almost want to suffocate. Yet that's what cars will queue for for hours and say thank you for paying. Can I tell you this? God has already scheduled your destiny helper. I have taught you. Your destiny helper kept visiting you, but he found you in jealousy and anger, not working on yourself. And they were authorized to go back I hope this year they will not come again and still find you who is still giving excuses and blaming demons and saying it's because my father was a drunkard that may not be the best but now that you know he's like that what do you have to do yes ago I read a story and I've shared it many times while we're in Zaria a man who raised two children was not a very responsible man unfortunately and he raised two children one would later become uh, a very bad person a nuisance to society and the other would grow to be some sort of businessman very responsible man and one time they had the opportunity to interview both of them and they asked the bad angry person why are you like that and he says what do you expect with the kind of father I had that was his excuse why are you bad and bringing trouble to society he said what do you expect with the kind of father I had they now ask his successful brother why are you like this and say he's also answered the same way what do you expect with the kind of father I had for one person his father's negative situation was a challenge that made him say if I came from a poor family a poor family will not come out of me it was a determination for another person he kept blaming some of you today will never rise because you are blaming everybody in your life they didn't help me I have an uncle somewhere I even saw him the other day buying cars for his children and not for me that is a, a mediocre excuse repent today and get back to work hold on the steering of your destiny with the determination of one who is working with God and begin to drive your life to a place of purpose it is not because you came from a bad family I don't downplay the pain that you came from but or, or you or you pass through let me tell you there are many people who went to ten times worse than experience than you and they have been able to reinvent themselves and to rise hallelujah many years ago there used to be someone in Joss I think he won one of these prizes for marathon years ago and we had the opportunity to meet him we were introduced to the man he used to climb a mountain with stones stones in a bag like rock stones you put it in a bag and be hiking up a mountain that was the way he trained himself for that kind of thing now he came from a village very poor village but then most people would see him in glory and not know that that was the price can I tell you do not be ashamed of your tears when you know that you are in a season of training don't pamper yourself if you must trek trek with honor if you must do zero zero one your meal do it with honor so that your children can do one 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 are we together apostle I don't have the opportunity to go to a very good school I'm now sending my children to some maybe some institution that I'm paying next to nothing they are not teaching them very much let the children make good use of that opportunity is better than nothing tomorrow God will supplement it there are people like us that God is raising as midwives I have a very powerful teaching here about the mystery of midwives we'll discuss Mephibosheth and the mistakes of midwives that midwives can destroy destinies a man's destiny was crippled because of the carelessness of a midwife a midwife is not just a medical practitioner anybody who helps people transit from where they are to where they need to be is a midwife and you can produce Mephibosheth if you do not know how to raise men that's a teaser for that series be around on that day 
that day will be like the coming of Christ I will not tell you just be ready hallelujah how many of you here as worship ministers listening to me can truly say I am working on myself to a point where even if 10 million naira is given to me it will not look like it is too much a reward do you know I'm saying this with all humility I remember days when I started preaching I would go to preach doing my best and once I'm done preaching you see the people discussing they are obviously discussing what to do with me and they would just put maybe rice in a pack away and once they put it they would just add open a, a notebook and tear out a little sheet and just fold 100, 100 naira maybe 1000 and just say man of God you know that uh, may God bless you and they will wait till I climb the bike to return me home first. Then they will just smuggle it like bribery in my pocket. But I will take it with joy. That was not my motive. But I knew that days will come when God will, his justice system will not allow that kind of thing to happen again. I didn't need, I have never, and I will never in my life tell anybody, give me this amount, give me this honor. No, never, never. The covenant of my call and my service prohibits that. I love him and I serve him truly. I would rather even sow into the lives of the people and bless them. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. I remember one time, I think I had preached in, uh, that was, um, I think somewhere in Ondo State. And we're done and we're, no, was it, that was Funabo, so I can't remember. And I was to return to have a meeting in Joss, and it was by road. Ladies and gentlemen, look, let me tell you. When you go through the seasons of training, don't worry. Go through it with pain, but with gallancy and honor. Knowing that there is a compensation system waiting for you. While you are rehearsing, my dear instrumentalist, don't, don't pamper yourself. Rehearse for hours. Learn the songs, fast and pray, receive songs from heaven. Okay, the first one that God used you to bring, it didn't seem to be appreciated, no problem. Go back again. One night you will catch a fish that your net will be sinking and your boat will be breaking. Your, your, your net will be breaking and your boat will be sinking. As a preacher, keep being diligent. Pray and prepare. Fan yourself to flames. Don't try to expose yourself and say, No, me, I'm here. Mm -mm. Neither do men light a lamp. You just keep adding fire. A day will come when it's time for God to announce you. He will put all your destiny helpers in front of you. And then somebody will passively say, Help us and round up this service with one last prayer. Five minutes prayer, let us pray. God will sign on your tongue and sign on your voice in a way that someone will come and meet you and say, We have a little conference. The speaker is not coming again. Can you come and help us? Don't take it as an insult. Go. And God will announce you until one day you stand on stage with the people you once admired and they will call you blessed businessman don't try to act like you're a billionaire well act in your mind but not by faking your life you're not there you're not there diligence will make you go there a day will come the people you are begging today to be an honor for you to sit at the same table to, for them to sit with you and they will share as colleagues but until then refine yourself I'm speaking to someone prophetically refine yourself have baked you will not rise to certain heights not by sentiments and not by anything apostle kings are not making a demand on me I'm a, I'm a, a chef or I cook you cook as good as what can we ask you to come and cook for kings and be sure you will not disappoint them you know I've taught you when it has to do with the issue of value don't stop until the person you are serving is the king once you have not gotten into the palace don't stop you go to my house right now God is my witness you on my laptop there are videos I'm watching there are there are things I'm writing for my own personal growth as soon as I'm done finished with ministry activity I go back it's not an excuse to say I'm going to jump and sleep I have daily routines that I must cover by covenant. Doesn't matter whether I'm tired or not. As I travel, they go with me. 
I finish preaching and while people are saying I was in the meeting, keep shouting under the anointing while I keep building myself. Lord, your boy is here again. Let's continue the training from where we stop. Your word tonight should be that song you heard. Fix me. Take away pride. Fix me. Take away complacency. Fix me. Take away flimsy excuses. I know that Nigeria is not in the best of state, but there are people who, it, even if Jesus was the person in Aso Rock, they will still suffer because their problem is in, I'm, I do, I'm not saying that in a, in a derogatory way, forgive me, but that they, they would still go through a, 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 a hard life because intrinsically, it's just easy to blame people and things. You are ready to rise when you can take responsibility and say, I've been a careless father. Nigeria is not the reason why my children are not in school. I have not gotten up to take responsibility. Lord, I have failed in my responsibility as a father. And I apologize to my wife and my children. I grew up from a background where I did not know much. Lord, I am ready to learn. My children will never be thrown out of school again. I don't know what to do, but I know that I'm not going back again. And the spirit of wisdom will take it from there. The first video you will watch, you will find my video on productivity. And fire comes from that video to now stabilize you first. Then you start following the mysteries of the kingdom. And in one year, it will look like a mistake. You would have come out of that and you will build a scholarship fund after your pain to now help other children. Apostle, we, we, we come from a very terrible family. That's why we're all struggling. Eight of us in one room. For as long as you keep blaming someone that has died and gone for the reason why you are where you are, there is no rising for you. In my world, there are no excuses. I take responsibility for anything and everything that does not work. And I get to work about it. That's the mindset of a champion. Stop pointing hands at people and... Lay your hands on the floor and say, Lord, grant me grace. There is a reason why my ministry is not growing. Father, I, I love you with integrity of heart, but what am I missing? And the Lord will say, go and listen to Apostle's message, the work of the ministry. And you go and get that teaching and camp with it. A message of one or two hours, you will use four days to listen. Because you will keep pausing and praying, pausing and praying. Finally, you will find a few secrets. And from there, you will rise. You must damage ignorance from your life. Fight it like you're fighting the devil. Mama, don't say I am too old. There's nothing I can do. If there is nothing you can do, you can pray. If there is nothing you can do, you can advise. If there is nothing you can do, you can call your sons and daughters and say, I may not have made the most out of my life, but my dear children in my lifetime, I want you to rise up and surpass me. I want to watch with my eyes your victory. Let it be a consolation to the things I could not do. Can I tell you, anybody who goes through the same pain you went through that went before you, um, you have not blessed them. If you go through poverty, make sure you are the last. If you go through spiritual bankruptcy, make sure you are the last. If you made mistakes with your life and all kinds of things happen, make sure you are the last. You conquer any situation in life when you bring victory lessons out of it that can help other people. Hallelujah. When we started what we were doing, people hardly believed in what we were doing. People made all kinds of statements and made it look like and I made up my mind from that experience that as much as God grants me grace, I will invest in younger ministers that are coming. Correct them when they are wrong, but encourage them. Hold their hands, whether groups as individuals, to help them. If they are stubborn and they don't choose to rise, no problem. That's a different thing. But for as many people who are determined to rise, I can tell you, for as long as I'm alive, we'll use the influence, the resources, the rod of correction all together to help them rise well. Hallelujah. I made up my mind that I was not going to be poor. The devil had that confession. He thought I was joking. Ask him now. I made up my mind that nobody would cut short my life before my time. 
it looked like an arrogant statement I watched many sincere people die by my left and my right I sympathize with so many of them but I'm happy that they, most of them have gone to be with the Lord but I said as for me the fullness of my days I will fulfill it is still my confession I made up my mind that I will never raise a people who are just spiritual and bankrupt of influence I knew that just speaking like that will not be the solution I went to find out from those who have the proven track records those who brought kings the first lesson I learned was that anytime you speak you must find a scripture that supports what you are saying and I went to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 that's where I got my leadership principle and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you it was an anchor scripture that I held I said Lord I will never raise a small people it doesn't matter what I will never raise a small people but the secret is the ministry of the spirit and the word of the spirit remember it is the mystery of the ten virgins it is not always about sin and righteousness you can be righteous and still fail the Bible there showed that it is about sin and righteousness and then foolishness and wisdom you can be righteous and foolish like the five virgins you will still fail so once you deal with the issue of sin and righteousness that is the first step you must now start giving yourself a superior orientation to damage and erode foolishness from your life the parable of the ten virgins was not about sinners they were all virgins all of them had the lamp which is the word of god but what they had was insufficiency of their relationship with the holy spirit it took the lamp and the oil for light to come you can have the lamp and not have the oil fix me fix me fix the issue of pride fix the issue of laziness fix the issue of giving excuses oh god it is time for my destiny to rise you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you he said let us not be weary in well-doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not lord this is not the best of me as a man of god thank you for your help upon my life but i take responsibility the nations are not placing a demand upon my life because there is a level of ascendance in the spirit that i need to rise to that probably through carelessness or complacency or an early arrival mentality have not risen but by this message I take advantage and I begin to press there is a reward not for this version of you a higher version of you man of God the day God uses you to raise the dead that day you will not ask for partners again people will call you even while you are sleeping and say please send us your account number we want to give you a billion naira and you tell them till tomorrow and they will call you by 6 a.m. and say I'm still waiting suffering is not generic your value or the absence of it is what defines your possibilities please try to believe what I'm telling you many years ago when I drove into this city there was a particular park not too far from here that I would go and stop I would land there and then go to a restaurant that was close by there and eat before I now start exploring all the things that brought me and I did that with joy because I knew that one day would be a, a story let me tell you something that happened when we were graduating the school of ministry students the last set so I needed to have a snapshot with them and then they drove me round to come in and I passed that area and I just looked and I nodded my head I remember the features there and I said goodness this life somebody you need to pray fix me so that your tomorrow will not be angry that you wasted your today let the 10 year old version of you look at me I taught something years ago in Zaria and I told them I said the 10 year version of you 10 years before now if he looks at you now will he say this was a person I wanted to become or will he say you wasted the gift of time 
don't let the 10 the next 10 years of your life look like the same because you keep giving excuses my voice is not very nice that's why i'm not singing well you are on serious then write a good song and let those with good voices sing and give credit to you I didn't have time to prepare my sermon for the teachings because I, I teach on Sunday and I teach midweek service. You know it's not easy. Respectfully speaking, flimsy excuse. Go and find out those who preach five to ten sermons in a week. And they have been doing that for many, 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 many years. I'm lazy spiritually now because I have children. No. 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 I'm not a giver now because times are hard. I used to go and buy books and invest in myself. But now I don't do so much. No. God is speaking to you because we are going to pray. And there is a grace that I pray to God for that will come upon you. Honestly speaking. The gift of a man. When God taught me this, it changed my life. I made up my mind that I will love God with all my heart. But my generation will never look at me as a non-entity. It's not pride. It's the truth. The secret is this. I found your word and I did eat it. I made up my mind that there is nowhere across this globe. I will not enter any circle where I'll be intimidated. I can be challenged for good. I can be provoked onto a greater sense. But not that I get somewhere and look at myself and feel miserable. No. I told myself that that dimension of shame I will end it forever there are places I enter today there are people I meet today that I consider it an honorable privilege to sit with them shake hands with them talk with them kings presidents of nations I don't take it for granted but can I tell you it is not as a valueless person that I sit there. It is not as a necessary luggage I'm carried there. It's with honor and gallancy to also contribute to their lives. This is what God is training you to become. So that you are like a battle axe. Whether you stand before kings and presidents and nobles, you will honor them as touching what they represent, but not to the detriment of your value. Hallelujah. If I may not have the kind of intellectual soundness you want, there is an anointing that can do something in your life. If I may not have the vocal skills that you want, I can pray and I have a covenant with God and he will come on your behalf. My question for you as we prepare to pray is what is that rod in your hand there is a rod you have neglected while admiring others there is an anointing that has been hovering around your destiny waiting for your value waiting for you to build yourself listen to me the reward system in this kingdom answers to value you are a doctor rise to a level where you become an exceptional one and trust the God who announces men to announce you. You are a preacher, not for the sake of competition, but ladies and gentlemen, make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that no man will give you access to his pulpit. And while you stand and you are preaching, they are discussing among themselves. Let this be the last time this man returns here because he ended up wasting our time, wasting the time of our partners, wasting the time of all those who love this ministry. No, no excuses. No excuses, no excuses, no excuses, no excuses. Train yourself, build yourself, cry but train yourself, cry but pray, cry but go for trainings. Some of you after tonight, you should go online and look for programs that you can do, even if it's two week, one month, two month programs that can help to file your understanding or informally educate yourself. There are materials online, everything you are looking for you can find if you search with patience and with humility and determination. Let those who have results speak to you and mentor you and help you and build you. Hallelujah. Make up your mind. 
that God will be able to trust you with the nations and you will not be a disappointment because of the excellency of your preparedness. Let me stop here. The reward system of the kingdom, therefore, is based on God's ability to anoint your value. Listen carefully. To anoint your value. Not just to anoint you. To anoint your value. To anoint your skill. To anoint your ability. Ability that is developed. Ability that is refined. Ability that is ready to be deployed. Then the anointing comes upon it. The union between the anointing, the engracing, the favor of the spirit and value that is refined is what schedules seasons of reward in this kingdom. Let me repeat for one last time, then we begin to pray. The union between the supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit coming upon your value, your skill, your ability, your gifting that has been discovered developed and refined with pain, patience, sacrifice. That is what schedules seasons of rewards. Are you a footballer? Huh? You are a footballer. Come. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. You are a footballer. You play football professionally. How long have you been in it? I, huh? find, I find it hard when it is always time to my bedroom to play. Like now, I'm supposed to play for Oya Sports. When I went there, I can't even play the ball. Yes. Listen, this is what I'm saying. Your gift, you have done your own work, but there's no anointing on it. You see? It is not skill alone. This is where the pride of the secular world comes. As powerful as your skill is, minus the anointing, the devil can rubbish you in one moment. That's why I told you there is a grace that is coming. Because some of you, in truth, you have done your homework. God brought you to church because the missing component, that grace that must come upon the oil wants to multiply, but the vessel is small. Now that you have taken time to expand the vessel, the oil wants to multiply to fill up every vessel. Can I pray for you, my friend? I'll pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this our dear one. You are not ashamed you came to church and held a football in your hand. That is a level of conviction and passion. You are not ashamed of it. I stretch my hands towards you and I pray in the name of Jesus the anointing that lifts men that comes upon their gifts may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you I impart that anointing upon you and in the name of Jesus I open the two lift gate for you I release you go and flourish go and prosper in the name of Jesus. That's how it works. Your skill and your gift. Listen carefully now. Watch this. My friend, the day you will come to stand here, remind everybody of this thing that happened. Go. Watch this. While Jesus was struggling to learn, the Holy Ghost acted as if he did not see him. Till after 30 years when Jesus was prepared, he now came to John in the wilderness. Right? John baptizes Jesus. Then the heavens are opened and the Holy Ghost now comes. You would think that he did not see Jesus. Some of you here are yet to walk on yourself. There is no need doing any impartation because the truth is that it's going to be a waste. The only impartation you need is grace and the stamina, the staying power, the resilience to keep pushing, whether in ministry, business, professional life and pursuit. But there are others in all honesty scattered across this crowd 
following online you are saying apostle i don't mean to be arrogant but i sincerely can admit to you that god has helped me i have done my homework in ministry i have done my homework in business it is for such i want to welcome you by this impartation you are about to receive now you saw what happened to our dear footballer gentleman there is an anointing believe me that can come upon men we don't just walk by skill alone that is why i told you the reward system of the kingdom is the union i will emphasize again between value refined value that is prepared to be deployed and then the engracing of the spirit when these two combine together there is no limit to how far a man can go it would be stupid and arrogant for many, many, many years before now to imagine that we'll be influencing people across the globe to go from one nation to the other and keep that nation at a standstill. It was a phenomenal meeting that we had in Kenya last, last year, I think it was. Within a span of one to two months, the planning, no publicity material that I'm, I'm aware, billboards and the rest, none. 65,000 people phenomenal meeting by the spirit the fathers of the land there told me according to them that the last time a meeting like this happened was when Maurice Sorulo came and the spiritual father of the man who hosted me we were there with him and he was telling me because he was Maurice Sorulo's interpreter and the fathers were broken and humbled and said we see the fire of revival returning to Kenya again it does not happen by luck I don't know what height you want God to take you in to. But in the next two minutes, for the sake of time, please, no distraction. I want you to cry out your destiny before your maker. In the name of Jesus, present that rod in your hand to God. Go ahead. Is it your music ministry? Is it your business? What is the rod you want God to anoint tonight? That with it you will use to schedule a season of financial rewards, rewards in terms of influence and visibility. Cry before God. Lord, I may not have much, but here is my heart, my mind. My everything, take it, it's yours alone. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I hand over this prophetic ministry. I may not have much, but this is the grace you have given me. Forget about acquisition, acquisition is tertiary. Over the primary the goal body. of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.